wonderful to see everyone around us on this special day. So technically I should not have opened this service by saying Shana Tova, I should have said Gemar Chatima Tova, which is the correct greeting for Yom Kippur. And this means may you have a good ceiling, but not ceiling like up there, which is a very good ceiling by the way, <laughs> but ceiling in the idea that, you know, when you close up an envelope, you seal the envelope. And so on Yom Kippur, we have this idea that we are working towards sealing a good coming up, a good year for ourselves. All of the teshuva, all of the apologies, all the work that we're doing, that's going to seal us in for a good new year coming up. So I hope we all have a good ceiling today as we look up at the beautiful ceiling above us in this beautiful sanctuary. Have any of you, just by show of hands ever had to go to the doctor or the hospital after you maybe got a cut, you broke a bone, you hurt something, <clears throat> yeah, a couple hands. And now that's very different than, I would also ask how many of you have ever had, you know, like a paper cut or a scratch or something little like that. So the difference with that is that, you know, there's a paper cut. So I actually, I got a paper cut this morning and I luckily didn't have to go to the hospital that there are some things that are small and minor, these little cuts and scrapes that we can ignore. We can just pretend that they're not there because we're tough and we're strong. And then there are some breaks, there are some cuts that are a lot more serious. And you can't hide them, you can't cover them up. You have to heal them, you have to take care of them. So on Yom Kippur, we are taking the time to heal and to fix those breaks, not on the outside, but in our hearts and in our souls. The times when we made mistakes, when we hurt other people, we hurt people we care about. Yom Kippur is the time when we really think about and we think about how we're gonna fix and repair that because we can't just pretend like it didn't happen. It matters and we have to take the time to fix it. And it's okay that we made a mistake. What matters most is that we heal it and we make it better. So this is what Yom Kippur is all about. As we move into our service, I just want to take a brief moment to acknowledge as well the wonderful heads of school and educators we have here. I don't see where they are. Here they are. So we have Naomi Rem and we have Gillian Feldman. Brandon Cohen, where's Brandon? Somewhere, and he's wonderful wherever he is. Brandon Cohen and Kathy Gordon, who may or may not be here. But they are wonderful if I could get y'all just to stand up for a second and wave for, just thank you all for all the help that you give these families and these, these kids during the year. Thank you. So we'll continue with Matovu on page 55.
will rise now for the Baruch Hu, our call to worship. So please rise on page 57. So if I could get maybe some answers to this next question, I wonder, when you first woke up this morning, what was the first thing that you saw when you opened your eyes? What did you see? I've got a hand over here. Your bed? Still looking at your bed? Over here? Your room? The whole room. You saw the whole wide room. Got some hands over there. You saw your ceiling, and you say you saw your mom. Is that what someone said? Having a nice wake up call. Yeah. Bookshelf. Got back here. You saw your what? Okay, gotcha. Okay, over here. A dog? Your iPad? Okay. It's probably the last thing you saw before you went to bed, too. <laughs> yeah. Got it. So when you saw, I see there's so many wonderful hands. There are so many great things we saw this morning. And you were able to see all of this. You probably didn't think about it because there was light. Whether it was the sun coming in from your window or it was your parent who'd flipped on the light to maybe get you up and going, all of this stuff comes from this simple miracle of light coming in in the morning. The simple miracle that you woke up and opened your eyes and you could see. That in of itself is so wonderful. And so we try when we say our prayers to really find gratitude to be grateful for the little things like that, just that there was light this morning when I opened my eyes so I could see my bed, I could see my robe, I could see my dog, I could see my iPad. All of those things are not possible if not for the sunlight coming into our room for us to say, wow, how amazing is this? So we will join together at the bottom of page 57 for Yotzer Or, our prayer expressing amazement and gratitude for light. Why don't we read together? Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, creator of light and darkness, who makes peace and fashions all things. Shine a new light upon Zion, that we all may, sh that we all may all share in God's light. Blessed are you, Adonai, creator of light.
Our next prayer is the Shema on page 58. So on Yom Kippur, we do a special version of the Shema. So normally, you know, there are two lines, and we say the first line out loud, and then we say the second line quietly to ourselves. But on Yom Kippur, because of the work of Teshuvah that we're doing, this work to apologize and repair, we are elevated. We get even closer to God. So we're able to say both of these lines out loud when we say Shema. So we'll take this opportunity to say the whole prayer out loud since we're filling our hearts with teshuva and repair. Page 58. Shema Yisrael. so lucky that we have some amazing teen participa participants in the service today. And um, the first one that we have is going to be Hannah Bloomfield, and she's going to be chanting the Ve'ahavta for us. So Hannah, come on up. And we can all follow along and chant with her on page 59. <laughs> Behold of a pa, Uve home nasheha, Uve home odeha. Beha you had barim ha ele. A share on ohi metaveha. Hayom aleva veha. Veshinanta mavaneha. Vedibarta bam. Veshipteha veteha. Uvlechteha va derek. Ufshok beha, uve kumeha, Ukshar tam leot, alia deha, beha yulitotafot, bene neha, Uktav tam, almezuzo beteha, uvi shareha, Lema antis geru, vasitemet komitotai, vitem kiroshim, meloeken. Ani Adonai Elohim, Asher Hotzeit Yetem, Meretz Mitzrayim, Liot Lachem, Lelohim, Ani Adonai Elohim. We join together for Micha Mocha on page 59. Page 60, excuse me. Asafatayam, Yahar Kulamodu, Vim Lihu Ameru. Israel, Fedehino Mechaya Huda Israel, Go Ale Inu and O Nights of Old Shemog and Josh Israel, Maru Hatarunai, Gaal Israel. Our next prayer is the Amidah, the standing prayer. So I'll invite you in a second to please rise. This is when we say our most sacred, special, important prayers, and that's why we rise as we open the ark.
Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Vehanora. So one of the most, uh, I believe, magical and awe-inspiring things about life is you never know what the new day is going to bring you. <laughs> that there's so many fabulous and wonderful opportunities that you never know what life's going to bring. And that is very exciting. So with that, how is it that we actually live a full life with its fullest potential? Our tradition gives us the answer. Let's read together at the top of page 63. Together, on Rosh Hashanah it is written, and on Yom Kippur it is sealed. But teshuva, repentance, tefillah, prayer, and tzedakah, helping those in need, are the tools to create a better life in the new year. Yeah. 
We had our team participants, and we have our beautiful youth choir up here. And they're about to lead us in Lador Vador, which means from generation to generation. And I know that I am so inspired by these beautiful, wonderful singers up here, leading us into the next generation and carrying the torch so beautifully. Let's take a few minutes now for tefillah talev, the prayers, the meditations, the thoughts, the blessings, the stories of your heart.
Long time ago, there used to not be the ring. There was no way that people could actually know if someone is home unless they knocked on the door. A long time ago. But a long time ago, this set of prayers was actually written, this next, this next section, which is really about knocking on a different type of door. Instead of knocking on the doorway to our house, what we're supposed to do now is to knock on the door to our hearts. This next section, the al khait section, the section where we think about all the things that we have done wrong this past year, all the things that we have maybe not admitted to doing, or we've potentially gotten away with certain things, this is the time where we're supposed to be honest with ourselves. And we do it in public so that everyone knows that we all make these mistakes. You're not the only one who has lied or cheated or stolen something. There are a lot of people who've done that. And our tradition says, okay, you made a mistake. You can do a little better this next year. So what we do is we talk and think about all those things that we've done wrong and we literally knock on our hearts to try and say, you know what? It's time for me to wake up. It's time for me to realize that if I want to be a better person, I need to clean the slate, I need to get rid of all those bad things and I know I can be better. So the cantor is going to help us lead this. You can find these on page 67. We're all going to stand up, and we're going to, the cantor is going to do it in Hebrew, and then we're going to repeat after it and beat on our chest gently, not too hard, and repeat after uh, all of these sins that we all have done as a community. you can ask one of the adults near you what they mean. Let's join together. We are sinful. We are, we are faithless. faithless. We, we are, are cruel. cruel. 
we are sarcastic, we are arrogant, we are vicious, we are dishonest, we are vulgar, we are dishonest, we are deceptive, we are liars, we are frivolous, we are rebellious, we are insulting, we are obstinate, we are destroyers, we are offensive, we are hurtful, we are stubborn, we are unjust, we are corrupt, we are destructive, we are unpredictable, we are neglectful. We continue on page 68. Together, for the sin we have committed against you through envy and jealousy, forgive us. For the sin we have committed against you by being stubborn, forgive us. For the sin we have committed against you by spreading gossip, forgive us. For the sin we have committed against you by promoting prejudice, forgive us. there on the bottom of 68 for all our failings O God of forgiveness pardon us help us grant us atonement in a moment we're gonna stay standing as we open the ark for Avinu Malkenu on page 69 just as we talked about on Rosh Hashanah this is where we're asking God please don't forget about us remember us we can be better people so we continue now as the ark is opened by our lovely teens to invite up our heads of school 
Naomi Ra'em, Gillian Feldman, Brandon Cohen, wherever you may be, Kathy Gordon, Rabbi Ashley Burns Chaffetz, to join us in the Hakafa. At this time, we are going to bring these Torahs around so you can be close to the Torahs. So get your little prayer books out as we march around the sanctuary.
as honey, sweet as honey on our tongue. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey, sweet as honey on our tongue. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey, sweet as honey. Haka Fa there. Please find your seats because we have got some Torah to listen to. Thank you. It's an amazing Torah portion and it's specifically curated to help us develop more of what we're doing in here today, which is to really honor the spirit and the feeling of Yom Kippur, to realize that we are staking our claim literally today in a future that is Jewish. When we read these words of Torah, we hear, Atem nitzavim hayom kulchem. All of you are gathered together, but the word nitzav is more than just a gathering. It's literally standing at attention with your whole body and your whole soul to say, Hineni, and certainly you have said today, Hineni, we are here. This is what our people do, no matter how difficult and challenging it is. We face our imperfections. We say we can change. We say we know we are not built to be perfect, but we are built to change and to make ourselves better. So we will listen to these words of Torah. We've got a little bit of action in the back. I think the noise is okay. We've got some wandering Jews. It's normal in the synagogue, I guess. The blessings um, before Torah can be found on page 73. We are honored to bring Matteo forward to read from Torah. And Lucy Falcioni, did I get that right? Okay, wonderful, to do our blessings before and after Torah. So you're going to be listening for the word Hayom, which is today, Kulchem. I'm from Cincinnati, which is not the South, but I'll use a Southern word, Y'all. Y'all are gathered here today, all of you. Roshechem, like Rosh, like Rosh Hashanah, all of your people. Everyone counts. Everyone is important as we listen to these very special words. Lucy. Baruch et Adonai Hambura. Baruch Adonai Hambura Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hambura Le'olam Ba'ed. 
Aru Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Bahar Banu Mikol Ha'amim Benatan Lanu Et Torah Tov Baru Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kulchem Lifnei Adonai Eloechem Rashechem Shiftechem Ziknechem veshotrechem kol ish Yisrael Tabchem nishechem vegercha asher bekerev machanecha Mechotev eitzecha ad shoev meimecha Lavracha bivrit Adonai Elohecha uvalato asher Adonai Elohecha and and when our Torah is out, we also bring to our Torah our biggest and deepest concerns and our worries because it is in this Torah that we find that the path of our people, our journeying, has brought us together in times of joy and also in times of sickness and in illness. And so when we recite the Mishiberach, we say to ourselves that we would like to have the strength to help those in our community who are in need of healing. It's a prayer for those that are sick. It's also a prayer for ourselves to be able to see those that need our presence and to believe in ourselves that we can be that person who shows up, maybe with a kugel, maybe with some soup, or maybe with a, can I help you with carpool? Something not let me know if there's anything I can do for you. That puts it on the person who needs to think then of something for you. Rather, I came with some cookies. I came with some soup. I'm going to pick up your kid from school. The Mishiberach is all about having that wisdom to be present, to make a difference, so that we are one Am Echad, a united people. Mishiberach is on page 74. up the Torah and roll it out a little bit for you to be able to see where we read that exact Torah portion and it is our custom to hold up our pinky as if we were reading it all along connecting ourselves in that beautiful cycle to the words of Torah please rise <laughs>
All right, you may be seated. All right, Shana Tova, everyone. Gamal Khatima Tova, may we all be written in the book of life. All right. So I need to tell you a story about a good friend of mine named Shlomo. Now, why are you laughing? That's his name, man. That's not very nice. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Check this out. So a good friend of mine, Shlomo, he and his family, they live in Tel Aviv. Right? They live in Tel Aviv in Israel. There's a, there's a city right by the beach in Israel, Tel Aviv. And they were going to walk, Shlomo and his family were going to walk from Tel Aviv all the way to Jerusalem in the Judean hills. He's going to be walking from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And he's going with his family, and they're like, oh, this is going to be fabulous. We're going to bring a picnic. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful few days of walking and camping and walking and camping. And Shlomo asked, but how, how are we going to know where to go? We don't have the GPS. We don't have the... Family said, don't worry. Along the way, as we go along the way, there's going to be these signposts. It's a post. It's a big, big, big pole with arrows going in different directions. When you get to an area where the roads go all over the place, there's gonna be a pole right in the ground with arrows pointing in all the directions of the different cities. So Shalom was like, great, this is gonna be fabulous. So they start their journey, they start their journey, and they come to the first kind of like fork in the road. It's like going in all sorts of di different directions. They're like, ha, okay. Okay, we need to get to Jerusalem. All right, so if we go this way, we are uh, going to Haifa. We don't want to go to Haifa. If we go uh, this way, we're going to be heading to Beersheba. No, no, not Beersheba. We want to go to, Je ah, Jerusalem. That way, fabulous. Let's go. So they're walking. Everything is great. They're walking again for a few hours. They finally get to the next crossroads, right? They get to the next crossroads. They're like, okay. Let's see here, where are we going? We're going, okay, this one over here, we're going to take this to Kiryat Malachi. No, we don't want to go Kiryat Malachi. Let's see where, okay, oh, oh, this one is going to Gadera. No, we don't want to go to Gadera. We don't want to go to Gadera. We want to go to Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. Fabulous, there it is. It says right there, pointing that way. That's the way we're going. So they're going, they're going, they're going. Until something happened, friends. What? I'll tell you. When they came to the next crossroad, no signpost. They were like, what? How are we supposed to know where to go? How are we supposed to know where to go to Jerusalem? There's no signpost. There's a... And the family is freaking out. And then they're like, Shlomo says, look. The signpost had fallen. That's right. The signpost had fallen. And they're like, how are we going to figure out where we're going? This is, we've been walking for days now. We don't even know where Jerusalem is. We don't want to go to Kiryat Malachi. We don't want to go to, we don't want to go to Gadera. We don't want to go to those places. We want to go to Jerusalem, but we don't know where to go. Everybody's upset and arguing until Shlomo says, eh Everybody, everybody, quiet down, quiet down. Listen, I know how to get to Jerusalem. Shh, not now, Shlomo, the adults are talking. But I know how to get there. I figured it out. So here's the question. What did he figure out? What did he figure out? So uh, Rabbi Joel uh, Cantor Shapiro, can you walk out, maybe Kendra Shapiro, come out on this side? If you know, get, think about it. How did he figure it out? Kendra Shapiro, maybe we're going to get some answers over here. How did he figure it out? How did he figure out which way to go? Shlomo figured it out, and his family's freaking out. The, the, the sign's on the floor. What do we got? Do we have any suggestions? 
Here comes Cantor Shapiro. What do you got? Asher and put the sign back. Oh, okay. He put, okay. So we're starting with the, but how does he know where to go? How does he, he could put the sign back. Yeah, so he's like, I'm going to pick it up. But where did he, how did he know where to put it? You, yes, you put it where the hole is. However, how do you, you can't maneuver it. How do you know where the cities are? We have another idea here. What do we got? We put it on the floor. Yes, we do put the pole in the back into the hole. That is correct. But we don't know how to center it. How do we know where the cities are? Uh, on pen. And you can just look at the sign even though it's on the floor. No, yes, you could look at the sign. But you could, if you put it into there and it's got all these different cities and you have all these different roads, you don't know if this road goes to Jerusalem, this road goes to Jerusalem, this road goes to Jerusalem. You don't know. You don't know. Okay. All right, got, we got some more ideas. What do you got? Uh, you look to see if there's any cities in sight where the signs were. Well, you look to see if there's any cities in sight. There are no cities. Nothing. You're in the middle of the forest. Rabbi, I have one over here. Okay, what you got, Cantor Shapiro? Uh, I don't know where's my bookshelf. She wants to look on her bookshelf look for Jerusalem. Look on your bookshelf. Always a fabulous mm -hmm. answer. You look, the good book says. I love that. We yes. have another idea here. Use a compass. Use a compass. They don't have no compass. Okay, we got one over here. All they had was the signpost. How did he figure it out? Um, so the sign must have fell in the direction that the wind was blowing, so follow the wind. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again. Slowly. Where'd so you go? If the sign fell down, the wind probably knocked the sign down, meaning you'd follow which way the wind went. Follow which way the wind blows. But that pla that country, there's wind is going all over the place. We're on our way. Okay. Uh, you look back. Oh, who said that? Me. Me. Who's me? Me. Aaron. Okay, stand up. What do you mean you look back? So where do you put the signpost? Well, you don't use the signpost. No, you do use the signpost. And you look back, meaning what? Well, where you came from, oh. you put that city facing backwards, so it's aligned right. So Shlomo, thank you very much, Aaron. Beautifully done. That's what Shlomo said to his family. He said, look, there you go. You can give him some applause. That's delicious. He put the signpost back up, and they knew they come from Tel Aviv. So they pointed the sign to Tel Aviv, and when you point the sign to Tel Aviv, it tells you all the other cities where they're going, right? Which means, in order to look where you're going, you look at where you've come from. Now, check this out. It's one of the reasons that we are here today. Look, all cultures, religions, Saying sorry is a good thing. You're not going to find one that says, nah, that's a bad idea, right? That's universal. But we have a very particular way of doing these things, right? We look back at the thousands of years of our tradition, right? We look back at the thousands to inform where we put those signposts, where we put our present in order to direct us to a bright and beautiful future. Shana Tova, everyone, and Gamal Khatima Tova. We begin the conclusion of our service with the prayer Alenu on page 80. I'll invite you to please rise if you're able. Alenu <laughs>
times during our service about brokenness, about the things in us that are off, are not right. And for some of us, there's something broken in our lives because of the people we've lost. Maybe relatives, friends, but not having them physically in our life anymore has left a hole, has left something broken for us. So we take the time during Mourner's Kaddish to remember them, to honor them. And so we'll take a moment, if you'd like to share a name of someone who has died recently or in the past, someone you're just thinking of today, please share their name either out loud or in your hearts. We join together for words of Mourner's Kaddish on page 81. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shemei raba ve'ama divrach yirote v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol b'yit Yisrael v'agala v'yizman kari v'yimru amen yehe shemei raba mevarach ve'olam u'amei almaya Yit barach v'yish tabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit naseh v'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit alal shnei d'kudusha b'riachu le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata tush b'chata v'nechemata d'amiran be'alma v'yimru amen yehe shlama raba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen osei shalom v'imromav Amen. May their memories be for a blessing. So I will invite all of the clergy up to the bima, and I'll invite all of the adults to wrap your arms around your kids. We're going to offer a blessing, or each other, anyone who feels like they could use a blessing. And we'll share the priestly benediction, the blessing over our children for this special occasion. May God bless you and keep you safe. And I don't know if I have a May God's light shine on you and comfort you. is close, and may God grant you the greatest of all blessings, the blessing of peace. Yes, are so lucky that we have one more opportunity to hear the shofar blown before our new year begins. We have one more chance to really take it in, wake up to this new start of the year. And we're so honored to have the best shofar blowers in town, Mitch, in the universe, in the universe I'm sorry, in the universe, Mitch and Max Dorp. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So. Are you guys ready to hear the shofar one more time? Yeah. All right. Takiya. Shvarim chua. All right, let's see how long they can hold it. Ready? Takiya gedola.
piece, O Say Shalom. Please join in with us. To wrap up the day, we would love to have you here. If not, Gamar Khatima Tova, Shana Tova, maybe a good and sweet year. He does that